helping everyone? All right, all right, a little bit of energy. Um, I, I'm, I was asked to talk about blockchain. Uh, I know getting the uh, bingo card out, and they, they get the stuff now. But we're, we're talking about a little different variant of it. Uh, we're not talking about ICOs. We're talking about uh, coin, um, all those kinds of things. Okay, so uh, uh, I'm the CTO of Change Healthcare, and we'll talk a little bit about Change Healthcare in a, a minute now. But really, what I, I want to start with is um, sorry about all the echoes uh, is uh, how we've gotten here, right? And we're all familiar with the, the history here of uh, technology, computers, networks, mobility, automation, and Change Healthcare feels blockchain has a, a, another piece in this, and we're building on uh, the shoulders of giants, as they say. Why is blockchain interesting to us? I'm going with this. Okay. Two-handed here. Uh, we all want a future where information is uh, available. It's complete. It's accurate. Uh, we, we all know the issues where you have to go to another party and find out uh, if you have access to the information, if the information is accurate. We, we see the issues with the credit bureaus. We, we see the issues in healthcare uh, all over the place. Uh, so these are attributes that blockchain technology brings to bear that uh, make it a, a really interesting, compelling technology for change healthcare. Who's change healthcare? Uh, I, I'd be surprised if many people in the room here had heard of us. Uh, we're, we're getting more, uh, we're, we're improving our marketing and who we are. We actually sit in a, a very interesting place in healthcare. Uh, we're the infrastructure. We're the, we're the company that connects the Epics, the Cerners. Uh, we connect the uh, University of Chicago's and Northwestern's, um, Kaiser Permanente's, the Optums. All of those names you know of, they're supplying health care, they're paying for your health care, but the way they communicate are through networks, uh, financial networks, medical networks, pharmacy networks, and that's what we provide. Uh, it's a company that has been uh, put together over several decades, and uh, we just uh, went through a, a big merger last year, about 15,000 employees. Two out of three claims in the U.S. are moving through our networks, uh, 800,000 uh, providers, over 2,100 payers. So you can see uh, we have an opportunity to be looking at technology and to be looking at the healthcare system in the U.S. in a very different way, uh, which we think we have. Hyperledger, uh, a Linux Foundation project, and Change Healthcare. As we have, were looking at blockchain technology over the last few years, we, we did a lot of internal discussions about it. We did internal proof of concepts. Uh, we started talking to vendors, and, and they wanted to do proof of concepts with us. But what we really uh, believe in is that blockchain requires a network, a network of participants. And what we saw was that uh, all these pieces were either coming together uh, or had already uh, started uh, being sorted out by different groups and in different ways. And so participating in the Hyperledger project really made a lot of sense for us. Um, protocol governance, consensus mechanisms, smart contracts, identity. When you think about healthcare, these are all very important uh, topics and very important pieces of the puzzle that we have to put together. Uh, the trust is different in healthcare than it is in um, financial applications. I, I spent a chunk of my career uh, building derivatives platforms globally, uh, and I understand those networks and that kind of scale. Healthcare, especially in the U.S., is very fragmented. Uh, what is identity? Who has the right to see a record? What portions of the record can you see? Individuals in the U.S. can can um, segment their healthcare record and only give providers particular access to particular information. Um, uh, patients in the U.S. can deny their insurance company access to their medical records or even some procedures and some services. It's, a, it's quite a mix. And as you look through what blockchain has begun to put together and the pieces that have been built on top of blockchain, you start seeing different pieces of that uh, puzzle appearing on the board that you can put together. Uh, when we think about smart contracts up here, it's uh, a, an important piece between the providers and the payers, right? Is the provider executing a standard service and should get paid right away? Uh, are they executing that service in a way that the payer uh, makes sense to them? So why do we choose Fabric? Um, 
had a lot of great points to it. I'm not going to drain the slide here, um, but one of the big pieces was we wanted something that was more than just finance uh, and, and had been applied in uh, other areas. Uh, we do have a financial network as well as a healthcare network, uh, so it was important to us to have some variety there. And the consensus model was a, another piece. We're not looking at a public blockchain in healthcare yet. Uh, what we wanted to do, and I'll talk a little more about how we've, we've used this technology in production, we wanted to start creating the space in the room to have that conversation. What does public blockchain in healthcare in the U.S. Uh, notably look like? Uh, and so our consensus model could be very lightweight. We're, we started private, we're moving to permissioned with our customers, uh, but we know who's in the game. We don't have a mining aspect of it either. So it's very simple. We're using blockchain for what it was built to do, store information, and store it securely and uh, store it everywhere. Multi-chain gives us some privacy. We also have another interesting aspect, given the position we sit in in healthcare. We have many competitors working with us. So imagine if we rolled out um, one blockchain network where all, all things were visible, and all the different insurers in the U.S. could suddenly see each other's behavior and everything they were doing on it, what they were paying, what they were not paying, how fast they were processing, who they were processing with, um, these types of things. Uh, we wanted to create space to work through those conversations. And Hyperledger Fabric gave us some nice channels, some subledgers on there that we could use to, to create that space, um, like we are with the public and uh, public blockchain and the PHI questions. Um, keep taking us forward here. So th another thing that we really liked about Hyperledger Fabric is we built out our nodes and started running our test networks. We were able to run at a really high volume. The amount of claims that we process every day um, is, is the highest in the United States. And to take a blockchain solution that could do two transactions a second wouldn't serve, right? It would be a really nice prototype. Uh, we, you know, we'd probably get a little bit of press out of it, but it wouldn't actually work. Uh, we wanted to put this into production. <laughs> So as we ran it, we were able to run it uh, 50 million transactions a day, 550 per second. That actually takes care of U.S. healthcare and U.S. claims. And there's slow growth in claims in healthcare today. It's actually, you know, population size is flattened out, level of care is flattening out. And then you're looking at bundled um, payments is becoming a, a greater aspect of that mix as well. So these volumes, especially uh, knowing that technology always is going to give us more in the future, worked out really well for us um, and are substantively higher than what, what you may see in other applications of blockchain, depending on the level of trust and the consensus model. So a little bit of uh, why this is interesting to us. Um, we're building an intelligent healthcare platform out of all of our uh, different solutions. We've acquired a lot of siloed solutions. Over the years, uh, we have some great teams that are, are building serverless, building container, moving very quickly, bringing all these solutions together so our customers have a, a greater uh, experience with us, improve, they can do their jobs faster. And blockchain uh, brought us a lot of the pieces, um, claims network, data rights management, um, that really helped us with this mission. Um, so we, we took one of our products, I think it's here, yeah, Assurance Reimbursement Manager, uh, recently renamed. And you can see a claims network here where there's a payer, an insurance company. There's a uh, claim submission, a provider, your physician sitting there, and claims are moving, moving through the network. And what Change Healthcare does is we don't simply just store and forward a claim. We add a lot of value on top of that. Both providers and payers are making edits to those claims. They're approving some of them quicker than others. There's a lot, they're doing revenue cycle management on top of those claims. So there's a, a, that claim processing workflow that's happening inside also has many other products on top of it so that organizations in healthcare can run more effectively. And when you think about why, why that's valuable, the less uh, your doctor spends on their back office, the more they can spend with you, the more time they can spend with you, the more their resources they can put towards your care. Um, and, and that's what we're trying to enable. So we, we brought in Hyperledger Fabric, made it part of our claims network, and what we started doing was driving the events out of the claims network into that blockchain. Um, and again, we were using Hyperledger Fabric. Uh, we have channels enabled. 
And what the graph is also showing here is we're starting to take events that are occurring on the blockchain and having it drive our network. One of the other important aspects of what we're doing is we're, we're not building from scratch. We're not a, a startup saying, hey, well, I've got this really great idea for a healthcare uh, network that's built on blockchain. We're actually already processing two out of three of the claims, like I mentioned earlier. We, we don't want to stop that and start all over again. We want to take that volume and evolve that network and evolve all of the capabilities built on top of that network, leveraging the strengths of blockchain. So we, we've wedded them together. We've put those capabilities into production. Uh, and it's been a really good experience internally. Uh, it took a couple of months. Uh, it didn't take man years. Uh, and uh, uh, working with Hyperledger Fabric was, was really easy and really direct. One of the, the reasons we thought this was an important step to take is we think blockchain technology can really change how healthcare operates, the business models operate. Um, Hyperledger was nice enough to put a, a little blog I wrote up a couple weeks ago about how you have to really use the technology to start examining the different business models that can be created from it. And with the, um, when you look out at the, the variety of discussions that happen around blockchain and healthcare, there's a lot of hypothesis, there's a lot of possible uses, there's a lot of this is a great idea, someone should do it. And, and we wanted to step, step the conversation forward. And by really putting it in production, really putting it into production on a massive amount of data and assets and volume and activity, we're able to sit down with our customers who are thinking about using blockchain, who have people who are thinking about how that would change their organizations operationally and, and with their technology, and, and really sit down and say, all right, let's, let's do something. Let's take it. We'll give you a node, right? You'll be permissioned, and we'll take it forward with you and build these new models. What does a claim look like when the flow isn't linear, right? When the provider isn't handing it off to us, when we're performing our services on top of it, we hand it off to the payer and back and forth, and everyone's looking at the same claim at the same time. It's a, a simple example, but it changes a lot of paradigms. It changes a lot of expectations. So we wanted to bring data. We wanted to bring real activity, and we brought it together in a way where our customers continue to use their existing systems and, and services to interact with us, whether it's through APIs, UIs, et cetera. Um, and they can start working with blockchain as well, and they're all working with one flow. They don't have to change how they um, are handling their patients today or handling their members uh, on the insurance side. This is showing the different, different pieces of it, uh, medical review, eligibilities. I, I've talked about a lot of what um, this slide is trying to relate already, and it, it's really the power of hooking all of this together as a network. A one-off blockchain proof of concept is, is simply a, an exercise, right? There's an, a lot of healthcare revenue cycle blockchain exercises out there. There's blockchain networks out there without any volume on them that um, people are trying to figure out how to use them. And we wanted to basically contribute our volume, contribute our data, and, and really push those conversations forward. We think uh, adoption will continue, and we think it'll come in phases. So what we've uh, um, started with is at the very beginning, right? Node management. We're working on uh, smart contracts. I mentioned earlier, if, if you break your arm, and there's a standard procedure for breaking your arm, and if the payer and the provider both agree on what that is, there's no reason they shouldn't be paying that immediately. And moving that money, approving that claim. Patient could literally walk out knowing how much they have to pay rather than you know the bills and, and the chasing that goes on. Um, taking it up to uh, exchanging clinical data, uh, fraud detection, transaction auditing, uh, all the way through to uh, payments, et cetera. We, we see a really nice path of using blockchain in healthcare. Uh, and again, we, we think this is something that's important to be open sourced. Uh, we, do, we looked at a lot of different uh, private protocols, and uh, they all had pros and cons. But when we thought about the, the broadness that we were looking for in adoption, uh, just in the U.S., right, you, you recall those numbers from before, 2,100 payers, over 800,000 providers are just hooked into our network alone, convincing them all to buy the same um, vendor's <coughs> protocol stack um, would be very challenging. Um, sticking with open source, 
uh, not only leverages the great work that you know hundreds and thousands of people are doing, uh, but also makes that adoption easier, uh, really improving uh, p the outcomes for the patients uh, at the end of the day. So um, I'll, uh, I'll end here. We're, these are the types of solutions we're looking at change healthcare, again with blockchain. Um, uh, Hyperledger Fabric continues to show its, its strength and how we're using it. Um, integrated uh, applications, uh, a path, right? I spoke earlier about how we are, we're acknowledging that um, having a public blockchain for healthcare in the US is a, is a long road to get there. Um, and rather than sitting down and having everyone try to figure out what that looks like and then build it, we want to start using blockchain in healthcare today. We have started using it today and create a space to have that conversation. What does PHI look like on the blockchain in a public sense? What is a pointer to where the PHI is stored on a public blockchain look like? How do you control access? What's identity look like? You know, Project Indy and some of these other pieces that are coming into play as well. Um, consumer application, uh, this is a, a really interesting topic in blockchain. I'm not going to drill deep on it here. I don't know of any consumers who like interacting with blockchain technology. I don't know of any moms, dads, sisters, brothers, cousins, friends uh, who have an application that really interacts well with blockchain technology and lets them know what's going on. So we're, we've pushed it into our infrastructure. We'll expose it as time goes on and as it evolves and the tool evolves. Um, but we, we think there's going to be something there, whether it's individuals choosing to use wallets, individuals using it for identity, uh, lots of opportunities there. And then lastly, uh, uh, keeping it open. Um, the consensus models will evolve over time and, and we think the best pool of activity is happening in the open source community, uh, smart contracts, et cetera. There's a lot of other organizations out there that uh, um, are creating opportunities, are creating conversations. Uh, some of them we're hoping will come into this tent. Some of them um, you know, we'll continue to talk with, but uh, there's really a strength in open source. Uh, we really appreciate it. And you know, one of the things that uh, change healthcare uh, really is focused on in the next 18 months is how do we contribute more back to the open source community? Uh, we've really been focused this last year on bringing this entire organization together, and we're, we're really looking forward, uh, going forward uh, permanently, in contributing back to open source and uh, really letting people see and understand the, the great technology we've created and the great technology we're using um, from organizations like Hyperledger. So with that, I'll say thank you very much. Appreciate the time.